Hi, my name is Barbara Swift, coming to you from sunny Florida. Although right now it's not that sunny, it's storming in the background. You can probably hear the rain and my little rat child, Chihuahua Rat Terrier dog is whining in the background. She's afraid of the rain. I also have a little puppy here and he's not afraid at all. He's four months old and he's fearless. But we'll get through this. I just wanted to show you a few little basic supplies that you need to get started in watercolor. You really don't need too much. You can be in a small space. I am a full-time RVer and I just do this on my table in my RV. You don't need a lot of room at all. So here's where we'll start with some brushes. I want to show you a couple of the brushes that you'll need. This is a round brush and they like a fine one and maybe a little thicker of one. Um, this one here is a number four and this one's a number twelve. So they're completely round with the furrow here and they come to a point. So you want to have one that has a little bit of flexibility to it. That gives it a nice little spring so that you can get sharper lines when you paint with them. So those are the two round brushes. Also, you're going to need a couple flat brushes, a smaller one and a larger one. And they call them a flat brush because that's what they are. They're just totally flat like that and they have a nice rectangle shape to them. These are really good for when you want to do a line. So when you want to go, you can use the side of the brush here and you can paint a nice crisp line with them. You can also fill in really nicely with the flat brush and I like to have two sizes of those also and then my angle brush so they're a flat brush but they have like that chiseled end to them this is really important for small corners you can get that little chiseled point right into the edge of that corner and paint that way and get into smaller spaces I like to have two sizes of these also and they're really great for when you're shading so this one's half inch, this one's a 5 eighth inch. And you don't have to have this one, but I really like this one. It's a wash brush. This is a 2 inch wash brush. This is just so that you can cover a big surface really fast. So you just can brush over your whole painting with that and just keep on going with the same color. I like to make a background or something like that. So it's kind of like a flat brush also, and it's 2 inches wide. So I didn't have this when I first started painting. I just had one like this. And as long as you keep it wet, you can use this also. But this one's a really nice bonus brush if you can get one of those. Okay, so that's the brushes that you're going to need. Of course, you're going to need watercolor paint. So we have really nice high quality paint. I do not recommend starting off with the student quality paint, even though it's less expensive. It makes your job harder. It makes learning harder. So I like to use really nice quality paint. Da Vinci is wonderful paint. And also I love Daniel Smith's paints. They have beautiful colors. So does Da Vinci. A lot of the artists have their own sets that you can buy. Like a floral set or earth tone set. That's really nice to get started. Just buy a couple sets and play around with the colors. And... You can make any color that you want out of just three colors. You just need red, blue, and yellow. So if you're familiar with the color wheel, it shows you how to mix any color. So you don't have to buy a lot of colors. You can start out with just three. So I'll put those aside. You're also going to need paper towel. A lot of artists like to use Viva paper towel because it doesn't have as much lint to it. I just have regular paper towels here because I didn't have any Viva left, but when I can, I do like to use that also. And you're going to need a water reservoir. You don't need to have any kind of professional one. You just need two nice buckets of water. It could be soup bowls if you have them. But this one is one I bought at the craft store. I think it's, you know, Donna Dewberry or somebody um, sponsors this kind. And it has two reservoirs in it. It has a little, um, these wedges in here are for holding your brushes. And you don't really want to soak brushes in water. You do to start with, just to get them wet and let them absorb as much water as they can. But then you want to take them out and you want to be gentle with your brushes. You just want to kind of tap them on both sides like that. And I love this because it does have a little 
area to hold your brushes upright. But that's all you need to do. If you leave them in the water, it'll rot the furrow and you'll lose a lot of hairs on your brushes. You don't want to do that. Okay, and then watercolor paper. This is watercolor paper. It's very heavy. It's almost like cardboard. It has a little bit of a texture to it. This is Arches 300 pound paper. That's my favorite to use. Strathmore has a 140 paper um, that a lot of artists like to use. But I do prefer Arches, the 300 pound. They also have it in 140 pound. But the 300 pound is the one I like. The reason why is because it's stiffer. You see that? It's really got a lot of cardboard qualities to it. This here is the Strathmore 140 and it's much, much more flexible, much more thinner. The reason I like the thicker wa paper is because when you get a lot of water on it, it stays flatter. The 140 paper, when you get a lot of, lot of water, a little tongue twister, a lot of water on it, it gets little waves in it and I find that a lot of the paint will just puddle into the valleys of those waves. So to make it easier on you, especially when you're starting, use the Arches 300 paper or any 300 paper that you can find at the craft store. Sometimes it's hard to find. A couple good sources are Cheap Joe's Art Stuff, Dick Blick. You can order it online. They can send it right to you. Jerry's Artorama. That's a nice little shop too. And they'll just send it right to you along with all the paints and brushes and everything you need. You're going to need a spray bottle. So I have just a regular old spray bottle I got at the dollar store here. Or you can use one that you've had around. This is, you know, the hair gel I like to use from Herbal Essence. It's a spray gel, but the bottle, I washed it out really good with soap and water until all of the spray gel was gone out of it and it makes a great handy smaller size spray bottle so you can use that too alright and then you're going to need a board um, this one here is just made out of foam core from the dollar store and I took packing tape clear packing tape and I just wrapped it all the way around it all the way across it to make it waterproof so that when I'm painting, it's not going to absorb into here and I can reuse it over and over again. Also, it makes it so that your tape won't tear the paper off of it. So speaking of tape, you're going to need masking tape, good old masking tape. This is just scotch masking tape. And I like this better than using something like painter's tape because the water doesn't seep under the edges like it does with the painter's tape. And what you're going to want to do is tape your whole piece of paper here. I'm going to move this out of the way so I can show you. Move this over a little bit. Tape this paper right onto this board. Okay. So all you do is you want to do all four sizes. And you want to cover maybe like a quarter of an inch of your watercolor paper. And then really, really rub it down. And you want to go around and do this on all four sides and that will keep your paper nice and flat and neat so when you're painting it's not going to move on you or if you did use too much water and the paper starts to ripple up a little bit it'll keep it flatter and then when it dries again it'll dry really nice and flat so that's all you want to do about a quarter of an inch and then make sure that you really really rub it down and it'll keep that um, paint from seeping under your tape and releasing your tape from your board and that makes like a little quarter inch white border around your painting which kind of gives it a little frame when it's not framed it looks nicer so just like that that's all you need to do so after you've got your paper taped nicely onto your board you want to draw your design on here if you're not a drawer, you could always take something maybe from a coloring book or something online, put a piece of lead graphite tracing paper down, and then the regular tracing paper on top of that. You can take your pattern and put it on top and just draw. And then what you'll end up with is nice fine pencil lines from the lead paper onto your watercolor paper. 
or you can just take a nice soft um, pencil, soft pencil, and just draw your design right onto your paper. You want to do your pencil lines very light, just so that you can see them. You don't want them to be too dark because once the watercolor paint is over the pencil line, you're not going to be able to erase it. It's okay if you have pencil lines in a watercolor painting, you just want them to be very light. And so if you go and you see someone else's paintings, you'll be able to see the pencil lines if you look really hard at it. Okay, so you want to do that. And then you want to have a palette. You need a palette to mix your paint on. My palette here, I'm in the middle of another painting, so I have all of my colors all in the middle of it here. But this is what a palette looks like. You can There's little smaller ones. You could even use... Um, a plastic plate or anything that doesn't absorb water to mix your colors on. I have a lot of colors here. Like I said, though, you only need three colors. You just need a good yellow, a really nice true red, and a really nice like cobalt blue would be a great one to use. But uh, paints are kind of like fabrics for quilters. You see a color, you gotta have it. <laughs> so you end up buying lots of paints anyway, but always the ones that you mix look better than the ones you buy straight out of a tube. So we're going to start out, I'm going to show you how to mix your paints. I teach a lot of beginning classes and that's the thing I notice the most is my students want to dip their brush right into the paint and then paint it right onto the paper. With watercolor you're really painting with tinted water. That's why they call it watercolor. So you're not using paint like you would acrylic paint or oil paint. You're just tinting the water puddles with the watercolor paint, if that makes sense. Okay, so how you're going to do this is you're going to get your brush wet and dip it into the color. We'll use this red right here. And you can see that paint is on my brush, and it's really thick. I don't have much spots here, but I'm going to put it right here. See how thick that is? That's okay if you want to have a really bold, strong painting. But I'll show you how strong that color is. Alright, so nice and bright. I'm going to rinse this off into my dirty water. So you have one well of water for clean, clean water for mixing your paints and adding water to your paints and then you have one with dirty water just to rinse. So I'm rinsing my brush off in the dirty water and I'm going to tap it onto my paper towel just to make sure that there's no more paint into my in my brush. I'm going to dip it back and get a nice brush full of clean clean water. Dip that back into the paint that I already mixed and see how that thins that right down? Okay, so now I'll paint right next to here and you can see that's a lighter color. So that's how you lighten the colors as you go along. So now I can even make a lighter color. I'm going to dab this on my paper towel, make sure there's no more paint in here. Get some clean water, because I don't want to contaminate the clean water side. I want to always keep that clean. Mix some more water into it. And, well, maybe a little bit more water would have made a bigger difference. See, it's a little bit lighter. Rinse it off in my dirty water. Make sure there's no paint in my brush. Get my nice clean, clean water. I'll show you. This should be even lighter. So once watercolor dries, it will dry a little lighter than what you see on your paper. So that's something to remember too. Probably about 10% lighter. Okay, so there, my brush is nice and clean. So you can see there was the thicker one. It got a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, and even more lighter the more water I added to my puddle. So that's what you want to paint with. And how you mix colors, I'm going to get my clean water. I'm going to take some of my orange, which is over here, and I've already got a puddle started here with the orange. Rinse that off on the dirty side. Make sure there's no more orange in my brush. Get some more clean water. And now I'm going to take some pink. This is my favorite pink, opera pink. It's so gorgeous. 
because I love hot pink and look at that that is a beautiful hot pink now what I want to do is make a coral so I got hot pink over on this side and orange on this side those are the two colors that you need to make coral so I'm going to take my brush rinse it off on the dirty side of my water well tap it out make sure there's no more paint in there and I'm just going to show you you're going to drag over some of this pink I'm going to drag over some of the orange and mix it in the middle. Okay, can you see that? So now I have coral right there. So here's my coral color. I'll rinse this off in the dirty water. Tap it off. And I'm just going to show you the difference here. So that was a combination of the orange, rinsing in my dirty water, and the opera pink. So I had the orange, the opera pink, and it made coral. What's really nice, though, is you always want to leave kind of like a story or a, a path of how you got your colors because that's never going to be enough paint to paint a big picture with. It would just be enough to paint a little bit with. So when I run out of color, I have to know how to mix it again. So I have my puddle of orange here. I'm going to leave that orange just like that. I have my puddle of opera pink. I'm always going to leave a little bit of my opera pink there just like that. And then I'm going to drag them together in the middle to make my coral. Now I know the recipe. It was orange and opera pink and it made that color. So always leave traces of the color behind. Or you can do something like this on your scrap paper. Where you have your orange, you have your pink, you know how dark you made it, and then you mixed them together and it made that color. And you know exactly how much paint and water made that color. Okay? Alright, well that's about all you need to know today. Keep watching my videos for paint techniques and the paintings that I'm working on. And if you have any comments, please leave them below. I'm just starting out on making YouTube videos. This is only my second one. But I want to keep going on with them. It's going to be a lot of fun. I've got a lot of things to show you. All kinds of different techniques. From my classes, we're going to use salt, we're going to use cellophane, we're going to use sponges, vodka, rubbing alcohol, and they do all kinds of fun tricks. So we'll show you lots of tips and tricks of beginning watercolor painting as we go, and then I'll show you some of my paintings that I've worked on for days and days that are a little bit more advanced, but they're fun, and you can always learn something from any painting, even if you don't like the subject. So keep on watching. And I'll show you how to watercolor. If you like my channel, please subscribe to on the bottom there and press the like button. Alright, thank you so much, YouTubers. Good to meet you, and we'll be seeing you again. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.